Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. My name is Lucas. And now there are so many different types of AI development tools. And you know, you can build out an entire app with a single prompt and you'll get a very nice front end. But most of these tools do not include a database, a backend, and they also do not include a marketplace where you can actually create your app and list it easily for sale. But in today's video, we're going to be going through a website called zower.ai where you can do just that. So I'll guide you step by step on how to actually start off this process, writing down the prompt, creating your app from the back end to the front end, how to manage this and how to even list it in this marketplace and eventually, you know, even connect your own domain to this product. Now, anyways, before we dive deep, I'd love to invite you guys to my Discord community. We are a bunch of different startup founders, designers, developers getting together every single weekday to talk about different tools, different challenges, different topics in our beautiful industry of AI and web design and web development. And so if you guys are interested in that, if you guys are interested in learning more and talking to us, feel free to join that link is down in the description below. So anyways, this is how it looks like. What can Zor help you build? And if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that we have this text prompt box over here. We have this file to attach an image if we wanted to. We have this prompt enhancer uh, button that over here that can help us enhance our prompt. I'm going to show you right now in a little bit how that's going to look like. And this button over here, basically, we can take this on, we can make this on so that we have a database store. Uh, we basically have a working database inside of our app. I think that this is very important as well as this authentication take over here. And then we have different types of presets, right? We have like a real time chat app like Telegram, a landing page for a SaaS products, a home rental marketplace like Airbnb. These are kind of things that you see in most of these AI development tools. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, let's make a real time Instagram Instagram like app, right? And instead of just having it like this is a very, this very simple, very vague prompt. We're going to go ahead and click on this enhanced prompt button over here. And as it finishes, we actually get a totally enhanced prompt based on your requirements for a real time Instagram like app. Here are the functional requirements for the minimum MVP. So it creates like this functional product requirement documentation for us with the different page structures with the different sections for each page so we have one page we have two pages uh feed page we have the post creation page we have the user profile page explore page activity notifications page and each one with their own types of functionality so once we have that we can go ahead and click on submit and once we submit that we get now this new type of chat interface where we have basically like the main features that it's going to start building. So we have user authentication and profile setup. Then it's going to create the different types of pages and then these different types of interactions and, and permission controls, right? And it also gives us an overview of the particular style that this app is going to have. It gives us this primary color. And if we're not, if we're somehow unsatisfied with something with the styles, we can go ahead and ask Zoar to basically reiterate. So we can say, for example, I want the primary color to be blue. Then we can click on submit and it basically creates the same type of overview. No text change over here. It's basically literally the same as as it was up here. But now the only thing that has changed obviously is this primary color. So you can take this logic and basically apply it to different things like the typography or the interactive elements. Maybe you want to emphasize on a specific font. You can go ahead and do that. So once we're satisfied, once we're done with this, we can go ahead and click on build app. And as it starts building, we can see that we have different tabs. We have this code tab. We have this database tab over here that's right now empty. It's going to it's going to fill up soon. And we have this preview tab, which is basically going to be the front end of our app. And in the, the final tab is the settings tab. So here you can basically describe your app name, your app description. And we have two different things here that I find very interesting. The price, you can set the app price. And we're going to kind of do that in a second to show you how that looks like. And we also have this Zoar Copilot, which I'm also going to show you shortly how that looks like. But it's basically like a built in AI, AI assistant to simplify app usage for both you and your users. All right. So now once Zoar is done with your project, done generating your project, it has all of its code, all of your project's code over here in this um, folder over here. Inside of this tab, you can see the database, you have refresh tokens, you have sessions, 
user passcode and different users. So this, for example, is me. And then we have the preview. So we can even continue with Google. We have this Google authentication, which is great. Right off the bat, right off the bat we have that. Or we can sign in with an email. What I'm going to do is I'm going to register with another email. So I'm just going to use like one of my personal emails and create an account like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create that account. And then I got that email. And I just have to go ahead and get the code for my email. And once I get that verification code, I can go ahead and go back here. Let's just click on never paste this verify email. And once it's going to stop, stop verifying, we go ahead and we can authenticate ourselves again. So I'm just going to go put my password like this, click on login, and we are logged in to our Instagram clone. So right now there are no posts because no one has ever used this app before. And it's not like a facade, like, you know, usually when you build something with Lobo or Bolt, you get like a facade of fake things. This is like the real deal. This is already finished. This is me, right? I got like this, uh, this picture of this older man, I can go ahead and change that picture if I wanted to. And what we can also do is we can even upload images. So like, it's, I can say like, this is my first post, woohoo, you know, and then I can add a location, I can put like, you know, Doral, Florida, and then go ahead and add an image over here. I can choose this image of this beautiful mountain landscape in, in Florida, which doesn't exist and go ahead and click on share post. And as you can see, we have our new feed with myself, with the location and with my new post posted less than a minute, minute ago. And we can also preview the app, you know, like many of these AI development tools, we have this like app, uh, this, uh, web, uh, this URL preview URL. So I can go ahead and open this right here. If I click on this little arrow, it opens a preview URL and I can, we have this little like um, mystery ball down here, right? It's called powered. It's called the Zoar Copilot. So it says I can help you complete various data queries, management and operation tasks through natural conversation. And also going back to our project database, we can see that a couple of new databases have been added. So we even have comments, we have follows, we have likes, hashtags, notifications. We, it, and this was created because of these created posts that we did. And we even have the post uh, database over here. So posts, I created two posts this with the same type of captions, right? With different types of images, or actually with the same type of images, sorry, and with different locations, right? And as you can see, my two different users with my two different emails. So now under the settings, we have this other, you know, special thing over here with the pricing. Now we have the pricing set at free, but we can go ahead and go into the community, for example, and see other types of apps that have been built. And for example, here we have one that's a hundred bucks. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. And if I go to the pricing page, you can see that it is $99 for this specific page. We also have different pricing plans like 29 or 299. But basically what this person is selling is not the actual product itself, but it's actually the, um, like they're not selling this actual plan in the marketplace. They're actually selling the whole app, right? So you, for example, can create an Instagram clone and sell it for like a hundred bucks, for example. And if you scroll through their community page, you can see that there's different types of apps, some cheap for like five bucks, some for 10 bucks, some for $40, some for $200. And so if I click on open in Zor, right, it takes me to a Stripe checkout page where I can actually pay for the specific product and copy it to my account and eventually get my own users. And I think that this is actually the main you know, selling point from this specific app. This is why I kind of decided to make this video about them because I just really like this kind of like entrepreneurial aspect that it wants to provide to its users. But anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about Zoar in the comments below and also join my discord, which, you know, we are a bunch of different founders, designers, developers, and we love to talk about these, all of these cool, new, interesting tools like Zoar. But yeah, thank you so much guys for watching. Hope to see you next time. Goodbye.